tasks are processes meant to execute one particular action throughout their lifetime, often with little or no communication with other processes. The most common use case for tasks is to convert sequential code into concurrent code by computing a value asynchronously. So that means we can use a task to perform asynchronous action and instead of waiting for it to complete, move on to do other work and then come back to get the response. A great example to show you a use case is using our shopping cart example would be adding an item to our cart. And let's say we have to make a database call and some other async operations to validate that the item is in stock and available to add to your cart. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal, command space terminal, CD, I'm gonna CD to the desktop and create a new project. So mix a new cart underscore tasks. And then let's just go ahead and open that up with code space period. Oh, I opened up the desktop. Let's try that again. Let's CD into our new um, cart tasks directory and then open that up in VS code. So we can go ahead and expand the lib directory and open up our cart tasks.ex. And let's just de delete this generated code here. And let's also create uh, another module. So let's go ahead and say new file. And we're just going to call this inventory.ex and then def module, there we go. So what we'll do for this example is we're going to pretend this is like our inventory context file that takes care of all of our inventory CRUD actions. So let's make a function that will check our inventory of an item. So we'll just do a def check inventory and we'll pass in our item ID. And we're going to just simulate um, some fake work. So timer.sleep and we'll have it sleep for 5,000 milliseconds. So five seconds. And then we'll have it return an OK tuple and we'll say that inventory checked for item. And then we'll just go ahead and return the item ID that we passed in. All right, so this is our fake work. It takes a long time to complete. And this is just going to help us with our example. So now if we jump back over to our cart tasks.ex file, let's create an add item function. So we're just going to say def add item. And this is going to take an item ID as well. And let's lay out some actions that are required to add an item to our cart. First, we have to check our inventory. So let's call our check inventory function that we just created. So we'll say results because we get our tuple back and we'll just call our inventory module, inventory.checkInventory and then we pass in the item ID parameter. Since this is async, we might want to update the customer with a loading spinner or something, right? So let's create a function, a private function down here, and we'll just say update cart uh, UI, Whoop. and then we'll just have it do a shorthand function here, and we'll just have it spit out a message for our terminal. And we'll just say that um, this message will say showing loading indicator in cart. All right, so we want our customers to know that work is being done, but it is not yet complete. And then so we can say, we can call our update cart UI now in our add item function. So we're doing two actions now. Then let's pretend some items might have like maybe a pr promotional discount and we have a function that checks and automatically applies that discount to this operation. And this is also going to be an async function. So let's create another function here, another private function, and we'll say calculate promo discount. And this will take an item ID as well. And this is just going to do work. Okay, some fake work. We're going to sleep it for, let's say, 2,000 milliseconds for two seconds. And then it's just going to automatically return. We'll just say automatically return our 10% discount. So obviously, you could do real stuff here, have it actual calculate 
real discounts, but we're just doing this to demonstrate how a task can be used, right? So after we update our cart UI with a loading spinner, we can now uh, grab our discount. So let's say calculate promo discount and we pass in our item ID parameter. And then we should probably also, when we get our discount back, have a function that applies our discount. So it changes our, our price and all that stuff. So let's say apply discount in another private function. And this will just take our discount value. And then this will, we'll just do an IO puts. So we just get some feedback uh, in our terminal when we're in our IX shell. And this will say applying, uh, and then we'll pass in the discount value. So applying a discount of 10% discount to the cart. Okay. And then, so once we have our discount up in our add item, we'll call our applied discount and pass in our discount parameter. Pretty straightforward so far, right? So we're doing all this work. Um, we're not just adding an item to our cart. We have other things that happen when our item gets added, right? And they all take, we have two asynchronous calls here, which is fine. And then from our results up here in our inventory, we get an okay tuple and we could also have an error returned back, right? So now to return our results to our users so they know that an item was successfully added to their cart, so they see it show up, right? Loading spinner would stop, all of that good stuff, right? So let's do a case statement where we are going to pattern match our result and we'll get either an okay tuple, right? Okay, and some message back that we don't really care about right now. And then we have to do something, right? Enjoying the video, show some love with a like and hit subscribe to stay updated. To support me and keep the content free, click join for memberships or pick up a course at elixirmentor.com and get free access to my private community. Let's jump back in. If it's successfully added, we probably wanna just turn off our loading indicator, right? So let's update our cart UI. And right now it's only going to say show loading indicator, but let's do some pattern matching. Let's pass in a parameter loading. So up here we can say loading, and then let's go ahead and copy this function uh, two more times. And we'll have one be success and one be an error and we can pass in an item ID as well on the success, right? So item ID, and then we can just change our, our prompt. Obviously, instead of it being a text prompt, you would just do different code, right? So we can say item, and then we can spit out the item. So item ID uh, was, so item, you know, Apple was added to, the cart. All right. And then if it's an error, we can say item ID. And then we could say something like failed to add item to the cart. Failed to add and then item ID to, the, whoop, got to get out of our curly braces to the cart. And now we have, we have to pass in our um, success atom here and then our, our item ID. So we successfully added it. And then we should also handle our error. Um, and this could be just a error message that we'll ignore for now. And then we'll just call update cart UI again. And this time we'll just say error and add item ID. Oh, I forgot the, there we go. And let's see. Um, this pattern will never be met. So we actually, since we're just going to check for an okay, cause our function only returns an okay, which is fine, right? Um, we'll just assume if it's not okay, we'll update with an error. Our item ID is not being used here. That's fine. Cause we're just kind of making up fake work. And what is this ceiling as defines private function. This is fine. It's just saying the only results are okay, but we want to pretend we're figuring things out for the future, right? We have this quick little example where we're doing, you know, all this work to add an item to the cart, right? 
So let's go ahead and save this and let's pull up our terminal and start our IX shell. So IX space dash capital S space mix. And if we call our cart tasks dot add item and we're going to just add an apple, let's say, and I hit enter, we're sitting here. We're going to wait five seconds for inventory to be checked. Oops, IO puts typo. All right, Whoop. what am I doing? Did I do that anywhere else? Nope. All right, so IO put, all right, back to our terminal and let's recompile. And so now if we add an item, Apple, okay, we're going to wait five seconds for the inventory to be checked. And then we're going to wait two more seconds for the discount to be applied, right? So all this happened and it took seven seconds for everything to get accomplished, right? And the cool thing with tasks is, look, we are waiting on these results, right? So we're sitting here and we're waiting for each piece of code to synchronously run. And that is not what we want. Our UI message won't work properly. And we are forced to wait five seconds before we can even apply our two second task to add our discount. So now if we refactor this a little and use task.async, we can let our long check inventory task run and continue to get other work done at the same time. So let's refactor this. And right here, instead of uh, inventory, check inventory and getting the results, we can just do, we can do task.async. And then inside of this is going to be an anonymous function that calls our check inventory. Okay. And this is going to return a task, not results. And a task is basically our process ID and everything. So we can check on it later. Okay. So this is now going to run in the background and not lock up our ability to update our cart UI and start working on the discount. Okay. And then what's really cool is when we're done doing all of our other work. So we sent our inventory check off into its own process so we can get other work done. Now we can come back and we can get our results. So we can say results equal. And now all we can do is say task dot await and we'll sit here and wait for our task to be complete. So let's say we're waiting five seconds, right? And we go to update our cart UI and we get our discount and that takes just over two seconds. So now we're only going to wait three seconds and we're gonna have our results back, but our entire add item now only takes five seconds instead of seven seconds. So that's pretty cool. So if we save this and recompile and now add an item again, you're going to see our update cart right away and everything's going to happen in five seconds instead of seven. So we saw our, sh our loading indicator right away, our 10 second discounts applied, and then item was successfully added to the cart. So the inventory was checked. Now, something to know, tasks are linked to whatever process starts them. And if our task terminates, so will the process that started it by default. By default, task await will time out after five seconds. So if you need to wait longer than that, we could use task await uh, arity two. And that just basically allows us to pass in a second parameter here. So we could go comma and say, well, we want to wait eight seconds. Hey, sorry guys, the eight seconds should be down on line seven in the task await, not the task async. I just missed the line when I was talking and then it will not time out in five seconds. So if you ever need to change the default time of five seconds, you can. And there's also a catch. You can only call a wait once. So let's say this task does take eight seconds and you call a wait too soon, it's going to time out in five seconds. And a way you can get around this is you can check on a task with task.yield. So we can actually say um, task.yield and pass in the task and how long we want it to wait 
for. So we're going to be like, just check on this task, you know, for three seconds. And it will return a nil if it's not done yet, or it will return an okay tuple with a done string message inside. So that's something to know. So awaits can only be called once. And if you don't want to call it too soon, you can use yield to check on things again. A task is a gen server. It's just a short lived version. But because of this, that also allows us to supervise it. So if we needed to, we can actually start a task from our supervisor if we wanted to. Tasks are a great way to get work done concurrently in a synchronous operation to shorten the overall working time, which is pretty powerful if you ask me. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.